Hi, this is Stu, and of course I'm here at the beautiful Purple Valley. And this time I'm here with Joey Miles, someone from my own country, which is beautiful <laughs> and nice. And, you know, you've been practicing since you were like really young, haven't you? From yeah, 17, I started 18, when I was 17. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So I'm always interested why <coughs> people find yoga at that age. You know, why, why did you start initially so young? Um, when I was 17, I yeah. was um, obsessed with, um, in fact, a bit before that, I was obsessed with circus. So I spent all my days juggling, basically. So I did loads of juggling from the age of about 13 upwards. And it was only juggling or other circus uh, types? Predominantly of? juggling, but there's so much to juggling. So you juggle right. clubs, you juggle balls, you juggle yeah. rings. There's a little bit of acrobalance involved. There's all sorts of stuff. Back then in the mid 90s in the in the UK, there was like circus conventions and right. you go to Glastonbury and the festivals and then you go to yeah. the circus field, you learn to walk on a great big ball. And, yeah. You know, you, you name it, you learn to uh, go up on a freestanding ladder. It's just endless kind of games and fun. And you're constantly trying to like learn tricks, basically. So you so, had that body control. Um, well, I don't know if I had that much control, but I, I was definitely used to throwing myself and falling over. And I was quite comfortable with falling over right. and looking like a fool. But in, in the festivals, you yeah. saw the guys who were like, like, you know, the Cirque du Soleil style, unbelievably good yeah. uh, circus performers, yeah. they did yoga. Uh, so when I was young, I wasn't interested in yoga, but I saw them using yoga and using methods of warming up yeah. before they started various sort of trainings in, 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 yeah. in the juggling stuff. Yeah. So, so there was something that was planted there, a little seed, although I didn't do what they did when I was younger, I just started to play. Yeah. Um, as I got a little bit older, I, I wanted to make some changes in my life, simple things. I wanted to give up smoking. And what um, age was that? That was 17. That it was, was 17. like click. So I made a New Year's resolution. I thought I'll do yoga first thing in the morning instead of smoking. And um, I did it. I mean, I, I, in the beginning, it wasn't Ashtanga. I just, I opened a book. You know, it told me some very simple things to do. Because it looked so painfully simple, I was then kind of shocked and dismayed to find that I couldn't lay on my back and raise my leg in the air. And, you know, but I did it. You know, I did this little 30 minute routine. I can't right. remember the book. It was called something like Beginning Yoga. I didn't know anything about the breath. I had no instruction. It never occurred to me to go to a class, but I did it seven days a week. That's, I would get I mean, up takes, and just start to practice. It takes some commitment at that age. Yeah. To and so was it purely the draw of seeing those other guys do it or why did you make the link to that and smoking and i'd sort of i suppose part of part of the culture of all the circus stuff it was very hedonistic yeah. and being a teenager i'd become very hedonistic yeah. and i'd slightly lost the balance i yeah. didn't feel very grounded um i wouldn't say i was depressed but like i was slipping towards that feeling feeling disconnection from people yeah. i wasn't finding communication especially easy and i was basically miserable um, and I wanted to, I wanted to feel balanced. I wanted to feel happy. Um, and I, I kind of, I don't know why, but something, some seed was in there that made me think yoga is going to help. And what was beautiful is starting a daily practice and then getting a control of a whole load of areas of my life. Suddenly communication with people f became really easy. Lots of physical progress started to happen. It was like, oh, yeah. the hamstrings are loosening up. At I'm enjoying age, it. Quite often yeah, it, it was pretty. Quick, it was pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was pretty quick. And and also for me, it was nice. Sometimes I would practice twice a day, and it would be a break from like studying for you know school and exams yeah. and stuff. So sometimes midway through the day, you know, I'd do it. But basically, I would wake up at six, put a towel out on the floor, do these first few poses, and then that was kind of it. I was away, and then. It was uh, about a year later when I started university at, at Goldsmiths University. Right. There was there was an Ashtanga yoga class. And so that again was that pure fluke, or had you actually sought out that style? Pure, in pure fluke. Uh. You know, so I turned up and saw there was an advert for yoga class. I thought, okay, I'll go along. They handed out the John Scott diagrams from the Lino <laughs> Mielli book, and that was it. I threw away the old book and I started that. Now by then I was doing a lot of physical theatre. Right. I, mean, I was doing my, my degree was in um, in theatre and, yes. and drama, so I was doing a lot of performance, and we we were always using a lot of physical culture and Tai Chi type stuff, martial arts type stuff, in order to warm up for the physical theatre. Right. And for me, what I really loved, I mean, I loved the physical element, but I loved the the slightly trance-like state it would put you in. Yeah. That to me fascinated me. Um, it really, it, it, that, that was really my sort of main goal. It was like, you know, I suppose I could say that I'd had certain mystical experiences and I realized that the route to them was perhaps, you know, not, not the best route. So yeah. instead I was going, hang on, what's a more sustainable route towards that? Um, and I loved that feeling. And, and when we were doing creative work, be it sort of more circus work or more, um, more drama type work, um, when we'd done the kind of bits of yoga, Tai Chi type exercises, the, the work we produced, it was just effortless. It flowed through you 
and, and it was just of a different caliber. Yeah. So I really began yoga to be a better performer. Ah. And then along the route, I, I kind of didn't want to perform anymore. I just wanted to do all this stuff, you know. So was that quite obvious? Did, or was there a transition in your, that brought about that change? Or did it just evolve? Or did you get it, to a stage? It, it evolved. And then it was just, you know, practical and economic to some extent. So as I was finishing my degree, yes. um, by then I was practicing every day with Hamish in London, um, Hamish Hendry. And uh, he said to me, hey, you know, do, do you want to start assisting for me? So then I realized I had this opportunity to be, you know, like the master's apprentice, as it yes. were. Or I also had another job off, which is, do you want to go to Ibiza and juggle and entertain in the queues <laughs> and be in the clubs and put on a costume and do all this stuff? And, and actually, that was still quite appealing. But it yeah. was, um, but it was, uh, I, I, I knew that, I knew what I'm like. I mean, easily influenced. I was yeah, like, do I go down that hedonistic that. route, you know, and get swallowed by that? Or do I do, you know, an unpaid kind of job that actually I'm going to love doing? And, and I, I never look back. You know. Somehow you went for that one. Yeah, exactly. The fortitude somehow. of will. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I slipped into it quite easily. And then, of course, I discovered that teaching is really hard. No, well, I have to say, it's like, no, what I realized I was, I was woefully un, underprepared. To and, do that. And yeah, but then, you know, you learn on the job. Well, that's what happened to me. You know. and, and so did you, did you, from that stage of apprenticeship, did you then go immediately to Mysore? Or, or how did Almost. that evolve? So I, I would have started with Hamish, oh, I'm trying to think. I would have started with Hamish something like February, and by the following year I went to Mysore one year later. And he was there at the same time, he introduced me to oh, Guruji nice. and Sharat and said, hey, he's, you know, he's helping me, and you know, I, you know that, that was it. It was like, and then, since then... I've, and you got through the sequences quite quickly, Pretty didn't quick, you? yeah, so yeah. I mean, I, I, I had done martial arts as a kid, right. so I did karate from the age of about, I'm trying to think. Something like eight or nine. So you had the strength from that. Not always. I was surprised when I meet martial artists. They're not always as flexible as you might think because they tend to pivot on that back leg. That's and true. So a lot of it's very one-sided. Yeah. And it's the same with the juggling stuff yeah. too. Um, yeah. The thing is, as a kid, I climbed everything as well. Right. I've just always been a bit sort of ape-like. You know, hyper by hi sounds Yeah, it. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I am. I was exactly like that. You know, I mean, I have kids now and I can see different kids. Like, I wouldn't have walked up the stairs when I was four or five. I'd have right. climbed up the banisters. Right. I wouldn't have walked down on a climb down. So yeah. I definitely had that strength, you know, right from the beginning for jumping through and back yeah. and for, yeah. for handstands I'd been playing with, walking on my hands, learning circus stuff as a so teenager. That sort of stuff so came easy. All that's... It didn't come that easy, but the fearlessness was there. You know right. that slight stupidity, fearlessness thing you kind of yes. need to just throw yourself or something. Yeah. Like doing my degree, we were asked to do things like run into that wall. Right. You know, and, and I kind of did it. Do you know what I mean? There was something in me that was like, OK. And actually, when you're full of adrenaline in certain situations or performance situations, you just do these things. And... Um, you know, now, now I'm <laughs> middle age, I've slowed down. I was going to say, yeah. I, you, I still use that. No, no, I, don't still, I don't still use that method in the <laughs> afternoon workshops, people will be pleased to hear. But, but there was that slight sense of just, OK, I'll just, I'll just throw myself at this. Yeah. And yeah, it came pretty quick. Hamish whisked me through the, the first few series pretty quick. Yeah. And so what, what, is it, what are the aspects of it that you found most difficult? So if the physicality was relatively easy, shall we say, what were the things that you really had to dig deep to actually to work on? Yeah, um, I struggle with rules. Right. I find that tricky. So I'm, I'm more of a relativist. Okay. So I'm quite keen, or I'm quite quick to kind of justify perhaps why I'm not going to that element where I'm perhaps scared. Right. I found the back bends really hard. Um, you know, just the, just the initial element of dropping back, I did find scary. Yeah. Um, although it came then pretty quick. Um, so that wasn't the lack of openness in the body, it was uh, the yeah, openness fear. openness came pretty and, quick. There was some yeah. fear there. I mean, I still have it, you know, like, you know, mm. I've just been in Mysore in February mm. and I start to hold back and Shrat will bring me into the knee, so I'm pretty open, but yeah. I'm still scared. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There's still, and also it's not just the fear, but there's an accompanying sensation of an adrenaline, yeah. you know, and I suppose in the beginning, in the early days, I was taught by quite a, a gentle teacher um, lovely Australian lady who still teaches in um, London called Leone and she was very much like look if this doesn't feel quite right for you you know back off listen to your body and mm. I'm still a bit like that so I find some of the the Mysore method of you know just obey and do it and do. there's a part of me going well, well maybe I'll do it today but will I do it tomorrow so I suppose I'd perhaps find the consistency the hardest yes you know yeah. I'm quite quite keen to go oh, I'll I'll do a gentler practice today or go back to primary or but that we sort of gravitate towards that in the West anyway, don't yeah. we? Because I think, you know, without being rude, there seems to be more of a, 
a thought towards the long-term effects longevity. on the body and the longevity of the practice and, and that sort of stuff. Absolutely. So I can fully understand your <laughs> reluctance to repeat very, very deep things, yeah. shall we say, yeah. repeatedly. Yeah, I mean, I suppose my thing is, is sometimes when I'm observing Ashtanga as it's taught in what we might call the traditional context, yeah. sometimes I look at it and I take the wider view and I think, but that seems for me personally, too mechanistic yeah you know to, to wake up today and just do intermediate because it's Sunday today yes maybe I will but maybe I won't you know maybe I'll start with primary maybe yeah. you know so so sometimes yeah I find that slightly I mean the way I personally view it is it, it can feel too mechanistic you know yeah. I don't want to do something just because it's this day of the week likewise it's Saturday night I don't necessarily want to go out and party either do you see what I mean it's like I'll see how I feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense you know I mean, it like makes a lot of sense but the, the, you, you have to play that against of course certain people's uh, expectation or contact and, you know. yeah, and go too easy on themselves. Of course, if you always of course. wake up and think, oh, yeah. gee, I feel quite tired today. I think I'll only do primary. <laughs> Absolutely. But then, the, of course, then the other thing for me that I find fascinating is this idea of being seen. Right. We were having a conversation just yesterday yeah. and I said to you, oh, um, I said I, I couldn't lift up in Karen Devarsana for yeah. the last month or so. Yeah. And then I was, today I, I was actually doing it. Yeah. I lifted today cleanly. And there was this sense of, oh, the camera might be on. I might be seen, <laughs> you know. And today, you know, I tried. And yeah. of course I did it because yeah. I tried that. Hard. Yeah. So for me, I suppose it partly comes back to those imprints that are there from performance, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. But it's like, if I'm there and I'm being seen by Sharat or if I'm being seen by Hamish or being seen by somebody I have respect for, there can be that sense. So, so that's something I find quite fascinating in the, in the relationship of the kind of, the quiet, how, how would I perhaps practice when I'm quietly on my own, nobody's being seen, yeah. it's just me. Yeah. I'm just perhaps, I don't know if it's more honest, but it's, it's a different feeling, it's more yeah. introspective. I definitely go easier on myself then. Um, and then this, this other sense of I'm in a room, I'm with people, the teacher's watching, you know. And I think so many people feel that. Sometimes they feel it as peer pressure and can get a little bit daunted by it, can't they? And sometimes absolutely, they actually yeah. get a lot of energy absolutely, and a lot of draw yeah. from Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes like you that. can really ride that. Mm. That's just what you need, mm. absolutely. Mm. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that whether or not we're conscious of it or not, that's why we come together. Mm. It's why we come together to practice, or in fact, it's why we come together to eat a meal, to, you know, we enjoy the company of others, you know. We're, we're pack creatures, aren't we? We like that kind of, we like that quality. I know I, I, I yeah. feed off it a little. I mean, I really admire those people that can practice on their own for extended periods of time, you know, Absolutely. like months, years or whatever. Yeah, cool. Because it takes a different level of dedication. It, it I think, takes a it? whole other sense of, I suppose, faith. Mm -hmm. And I suppose when you're saying, you know, what's the difficulty for me? I mean, I could name certain poses, like it took me 10 years to come up from Karen Devarsana yeah. and, you know, uh, when Gandhabar and Dasana, the, the pose when you're on yeah. your sort of chest, throat, in the, I found that very scary. I still find that scary. Just recently uh, doing Mula Bandhasana with Sharat in my, so it's like, it's petrifying for me, you know. But actually, I suppose for me, what I'm trying to explain is perhaps I would say it's less the physical stuff that I really see as a major sticking point. It's more perhaps a crisis of faith. Yes. Do you see what I mean? So like instantly when you were talking about the people who, who can just do it endlessly on their own, yeah. you know, I'm thinking of the, the sutra where it's talking about the Shraddha, Virya, Smriti Samad, and it's this thing of like, do you, do you have that, that faith and enthusiasm? Mm. Now I have it a lot, but it'll ebb and flow. <laughs> you know, so that consistency of strong conviction, yeah. because it requires strong conviction to, to really put, it, put your all in. And the moment for me that's lacking, that's when physically it doesn't happen or it doesn't work. You know, it's like then it's 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 like the candle's been snuffed. <laughs> snuffed <you know>? yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you seem, you know, you're quite a high energy type person. That's how you come across. And yeah. do you find that you then consequently have trouble with stillness or drawing mm. back, or does that also come? You know, uh, I've worked on it. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, I've worked on it, and I mean, I sit the passana fairly regularly. Okay. I've certainly done, yeah, a fair few courses like that and I, I view stillness as a, probably the most important part of the practice um, right from the beginning when I was 17 I was learning to do postural yoga yes um, straight away I then started to learn sitting meditation and uh, went to various classes and groups and sat I sat with the friends of the Western Buddhist order years ago in London really regularly doing the metta bhavana mindfulness of breathing then later vipassana um, and right from the beginning when I was doing circus stuff and drama stuff, I remember my drama teachers getting us to lie down and do relaxation exercises. Mm. And I just, that I think is what drew me in towards the yoga. It was that sense of just deep, profound peace. You know, and that, that's still, I think, what I really long for and really do get through the practice. And sometimes that's 
peace and stillness within the midst of what you might call quite chaotic movement, yeah. but sometimes that's the, the deep stillness afterwards. And has it changed throughout your... So how long have you been practising now? So you, you were what? I think it's about 17 years. years. Yeah. yeah so have you found that, obviously, during that journey, that the yoga has been there to support you in different phases? And, yeah. and so how has it done that? Because a lot of people either start yoga because they're in this crisis point or are looking yeah. for something. So, so definitely there was some element of that when I first started. There was definitely a time I remember when I was 20 and mm-hmm. I broke up with a long-term girlfriend. Again, there was a bit of a crisis and I really took to city meditation with much more zeal and much more like this will save me and postural practice. I was like, right, you know, I'm not going to skip days. Here we go, two hours a day. Um, later, um, you know, I, and then for a whole period from when I was probably 20 to 24, I don't think I missed a day of practice. It was like, there I was, like clockwork. Um, when I had kids, everything changed. Right. Um, so I've got two kids who are 10 and 8. So, you know, Caleb, my son, he was born when I was 25. I just turned 25. So that just changed everything overnight um, because I was tired. Yes. And I would try, and this is perhaps why I think it's sometimes mechanistic to go, well, I'll do second because it's Sunday. So it would depend how many hours of sleep I get a night and if it's broken and what I'm having to deal with to try to raise a family and yes. so on. So, so at that point... Um, well, there was two things. One is I just practiced less in the Ashtanga sequence, and I stopped practicing the advanced series, you know, pretty much altogether, actually. Yeah. I was just doing primary and second back then. And I started practicing with a, a teacher in London called Alaric Newcomb. Uh-huh. And, now he's you know, an Iyengar, isn't Yeah, that's he? right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so he's an Iyengar teacher. And, I mean, he was great, because he basically would just laugh at me, and go, you can't straighten your legs, you can't do a headstand. You, can, you know, left, right, and so he'd be like, you know, w- what are you doing here? You know? And that's quite often the was, experience of Ashtanga people going to Iyengar yeah. for the first few times. And I, and I loved it, because it was so humbling. Mm. But I knew he knew what I was, he was talking about. And he, he was brilliant, because he was so accepting of the Ashtanga I did, didn't tell me to stop which is great which was yeah. great and also he would let me bring Caleb when he was a baby to class and sometimes I would be um, I'd be in like a chair supported shoulder stand yeah you know like this you know on the bolsters and he'd just push Caleb who was a sleeping three-month-old baby next to me so that Caleb could suck my finger as he woke up <laughs> and I'd be doing these long inversions rope inversions all that stuff uh, supine poses and and that felt unbelievably nourishing and just what I needed yeah so as soon as I was doing that work, to process what I was learning in class with him a couple of times a week, in my morning practice, I'd often start with Surya Namaskar, the standings. If I had the energy, I'd do a series, but often halfway through a series, I would stop. I'd do Shirshasana on the ropes. Yeah. I'd do Savangasana on chairs. I'd just do supine poses. And I'd basically, I mean, frankly, I was having a bit of a long siesta, but it, but it felt nourishing. Whereas if yeah. I just banged through a series, which I, I could from the outside do, I, I just felt exhausted. So you were sensible enough to use the practice in a supportive way to what that, you were that's doing. That's what I did, and I yeah. view it as really helpful for yeah. me. Other people are like, oh, why are you mixing methods? And, yeah. you know, some people think that's daft. But for me, it really helped. And it influenced and gave me input for teaching. Um, and I suppose the main thing is, is it's like, I mean, we know that we have the force of gravity and so mm. on. It's like, well, actually, when you're fatigued, just, just go with it and lie down, be that on the earth or on a bolster. Yeah. And, you know, so... So yeah, that was that, that changed everything for me. And now my kids are older, so I I still am very influenced by it, but I find I'm more back on the kind of... Um, so now this is freeing up more time. It's freeing up more time and energy. I mean, as soon as you stop carrying your children around, mm. that's a big shift, mm. you know, that big change. Did you, you know. find that created some imbalances in your body from the, the child-carrying stuff? It's really hard to... Uh, know where the imbalances come from I, yeah. I feel like I have this like left side of the body and this right side of the body and yeah. I feel like you know they're never symmetrical <laughs> so like uh, you know I, th- there are times I catch myself going oh it's because I carry the kids on this hip yeah. and then I think well maybe it's not maybe it's because I stood on the left and I kicked the football with my right or maybe every time I was riding a bike you know I yeah. would step off and stand on the left you know so yeah. there's all these things it's impossible to say was it from yeah. this or was it from that but definitely there's imbalance in the body yeah and the yoga makes that very uh, very obvious you know? and to take you back to the bit about you know you were you were choosing the type of practice you were doing because a lot of people I, I feel you know they they want to practice a lot um, but it, to try and fit that in, it's all very well if you're like semi-retired like me in the sun here doing a bit of work and the practice and whatever and you can you've got loads of time to fit it in. But when you've got a busy life with the proper working hours and, and kids to look after and this, that and the other, it can 
yeah something's got something's got to give something's got to give yeah i mean i i i definitely had a feeling like i'm cheating right i'm letting my students down i'm only doing 30 minutes of practice some days and then actually there's a whole part of you and you take the long view you go you know well, why do i practice yeah you know and for me i practice so that it can support my life and i practice so that i can hopefully become a better person yeah i mean at the same time i was first 17 18 starting to take this interest you know i was you know uh, i remember seeing the dalai lama give a talk about ethics for a new millennium back then it was 99 going into the millennium and he was talking about essentially how to be a nice person mm. and actually sometimes i think we forget that i mean all this stuff's interesting about Karen de Varsena and yeah. fancy back bends, but actually a lot of the time it's like, you know, I, I want to be there for my kids. Mm. Or if students are there, I want to be able to listen. Yeah. It's not such an easy skill. And that's, as you say, more important than... Well, well, no, but, then, but then, then surely the practice is designed so that you're actually listening to yourself. Mm. You get feedback. Do you choose to ignore that feedback and plow on regardless? Um, or do you choose to, to, to listen? Now, sometimes, like I say, you can then justify the lazy <laughs> response and oh, you know, you know, we'll just put legs up the wall every day, you know. Yeah, if it's you not know. careful. But, but I don't think that's the case because actually when you do that and you listen, you find that lethargic, tamasic quality that's seeped in, then you, you crave movement. Mm -hmm. So then you start doing the dynamic movement again. So yeah. I, I don't really feel it's all that complex. You, you, you listen and you, you, know, you, you do what, what comes naturally, or that's what I've often yeah. you know, chosen to, to, to do. So yeah. if there's people there that are stuck in that that rut or rhythm where they, they're feeling, because I've come across people that uh, are saying that they really, they can't do this because it drains them down so much. You know, course, they want to yeah. practice more, but they can only do three times a week, four times a week. And then they don't feel like a proper ashtangi because of the fact yeah. they're not doing six times a week. Sure, But sure. they just feel exhausted. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that's why I'm always encouraging people to do restorative yoga, supine poses and and yeah, and just just let go of that as, a, as, as an idea and a concept. Mm. I mean, it's almost like saying, "Oh, my my uh, my value as a part-time school teacher or something is, is valueless." I mean, it's, it's, it's a ludicrous notion. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you if yeah. you just change the context, you go, "Well, that's nonsense." You know, a yeah. part-time nurse is a part-time nurse. Yeah. You know, a full-time nurse is a full-time nurse. Yeah. Is one better? Or a nurse, it's yeah. like yeah, it's like you you know during those hours you know you can take benefit, don't you? You know, and 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 I would say you know going back to that sense of sometimes my faith or enthusiasm wanes it's like well well sure but at the same time it's like i know that even when i take an extra day off you know i um i feel i feel the benefit of the rest and i feel the benefit of then working in a very dynamic way mm. you know and, and it goes with the seasons doesn't it you know. and so like now with your practice what season are you in now <laughs> <laughs> so like, you it depends on the day of the week <laughs> depends if you ask me at three in the morning or you know late um uh, I've just been in Mysore, right. and I have to admit, I've lost some of the hunger. So, do you, so you went there looking for inspiration, or why no, did no, you go? No, I was feeling. Uh, I feel it's important for me to go back and to tap in, and right. you know, to for the to, authenticity to, of, of, of teacher. Or? Not exactly that. No, my my perhaps most intense periods of practice and study. Right. Intense, but also transformative in a very positive way of being in Mysore. Yeah. You know, and um, uh, yeah, so I like to go back. Because when I'm there, I don't have work commitments. Yeah. Um, this time round, I didn't have family commitments. I wasn't there with my children, um, so I can really, I can really, you know, chew on it. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the day, you can relax and rest. So if you do slightly exhaust yourself, well, you take a siesta in the middle of the day. Anyway, so but the main thing I've noticed for me is I, I, I've lost the enthusiasm for learning more poses. That's right. for sure. Um, which is which is new for me. Yeah. You know, so and no, it, it's thrown me a bit. I'm like, oh, but I just don't particularly want to go there. Yeah. I, was, I, I remember years ago when I started at Hamish's, I saw two or three guys and a girl practicing, you know, advanced it, mm. practicing third. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, I, thought, I want to do that. Not only that, I was probably arrogant and cocky enough to think I can I do, can do that. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and, you know, committed to it and over the course of, you know, several years learned to do it. Yeah. I never. I never felt that when I saw people doing four. And now yeah. I've got to the point in Mysore where I've just been starting Mula Bandhasana, but yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. But I don't have the desire to do so it. To want to do it. Yeah, and, and maybe that'll change. But right now I'm slightly grappling with the, oh, you know, so yeah. you know, that's, that's new for me. And there's quite a few people that, uh, 
struggling on with some of these very deep postures. Yeah. And it, it takes its toll on the body, doesn't it? Yeah, and but that's the other thing for me as yeah. well. I suppose this is the thing that is the problem with faith and enthusiasm. Yeah. For me, this time round, um, you know, I'm at the end doing back bends, holding my knees every day with an assist, you yeah. know, shrapnel holding it. And uh, it's creating what I would say imbalance in the body. Yeah. I'm, I'm too extended. Yeah. You know, I feel like if I'm going to do that, I need to be doing more forward bending to counter that. Yeah. So I don't want to do it just once a week. Um, and also, I frankly, I just don't want to be 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 doing such a such a deep back bend. Anyway, yeah. it doesn't feel right for me. Yeah. But also, when you're there, you kind of have to play the game. So yeah. when I'm there, I play the game, you know, yeah. but I'm here, I haven't, I haven't caught my knees once since I've left in a couple <laughs> like of weeks, you know, so, so in, you know, so let's just be honest about that. It's like, no, I haven't done it. You know, I need somebody to help me, yeah. but I'm not desperately trying to plow in and get yeah. up there. There was yeah. probably a time I was, but you know, that's kind of gone. Yeah. Also, I suppose for me is having done the stuff with Alaric and the Iyengar school, it's like, yes. I'm aware of how to, um, how to say like- Look for evenness. Look, well, look for evenness, but you know, balance the stresses in the body yeah. and I'm aware in my spine there are certain places I can hinge from and overwork yes and if I'm going to take a pose to such an extreme place I just I just fall into my weak spots yeah or I fall into the flexible spots and that just makes my stiff part stiffer yeah and the flexible part and then I'm More just like well about. this just is I, I, I can see the imprint I'm making and it's not functional yeah so 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 that gives me this slight crisis of faith of well you know but then my difficulty is I can communicate this so easily with you or anybody who yes. studies anatomy, but yes. if I were to try, and I haven't tried, but if I were to try and have the dialogue with Sharat, I know he'll be like, just stop thinking and do it. Yes. This would be the answer. Stop yes. thinking, you know, tap me on the head, so stop thinking. Boom, boom. And of course I can do that, yeah. you know, but it, for, for me now, it's not feeling, you know, it's not feeling like... Um, the right direction. Yeah, it's not feeling the right direction, exactly. So what are, you, what are you looking for in your practice in the years to come? Have you got a direction that you want to go in or where are you being drawn to? Uh, I, I want to be able to do it for a long time. I get yeah. a lot of benefit from it. I want to be able to feel grounded. Sometimes with that, with, with, with practice that's too strong, I start to feel a bit flighty. Yeah. Um, I want to create, yeah, balance and a kind of sensitive body that knows how to respond. I don't want to be mechanistic is my main thing. Yeah. You know, I, I really, I really, maybe, I don't know if I fear, I, I know how habits can be in, in myself and I, I don't want to respond in that mechanistic way. No. I, I suppose, I suppose in a way I might say like, for me, and this is a total sort of overview, I believe perhaps yoga is there to take us more towards our natural state. Right. And yeah, in that respect, I don't know how, I don't know how much, you know, really strong postural yoga you need to do to get there. To I, think, get there. I think there was a process of unlocking the body through these various series that I've worked on in the Ashtanga system yeah. and the Iyengar system to some extent that um, taps you back to a more natural way of being, takes away some of the patterns of the body that you know have perhaps crept in through certain work, you know, other, other work cultural stuff, sitting on a chair, you mm. name it, sitting on a toilet that's actually a chair, not a, just squatting yeah. on the ground, you know, these kind of things. And then you've unlocked a lot of that and then I suppose the question I ask is, how much, how much more work is there to do? Yeah. And, and certainly, I suppose I, I question, should it feel like work? Mm. Because I suppose I, I came to yoga and it felt like play. You know, like I went to the circus field and I was playing with balls and clubs and people and walking about. Yes. It all felt like play. I started doing yoga and it felt like play. Yeah. On a good day, yoga feels like play. And it feels kind of interesting and fascinating and I'm just playing around. And, and I like that. Now, obviously, there's a, there's a structure to it within the Ashtanga system, and I love that structure because it's a system that I think kind of works. Yeah. But then there are perhaps fashions within it or trends within it that sometimes it, it, the, the play element is lost, and it just gets a bit too, like, it feels like a job. And yeah. that, I, I know, yeah. sort of technically, I don't, how does, it, it's not, it doesn't feel like my job to do yoga. No, really. And if it does, then, it's, then I've then lost the plot. It sucks all the fun out of it. Exactly, it is, yeah. As you say. I, I yeah. completely agree. I remember <laughs> when I started, I thought, this is so cool. I'm like tying myself in knots like I was a kid. Yeah. You know? And it, it, it's liberating, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, so, so that's definitely it. There's, there's, like, I suppose what I'm looking for as I continue with yoga is I want to keep the playfulness. I want to keep, keep it fun, um, keep it enjoyable. You know, and, and, and actually, in terms of um, calming the mind, stilling the mind, all that, there's definitely a process involved where there's 
certain amount of serious study to be done, and I've still got a lot of that to do. Mm. You know, I mean, I'm the, you know, I still think of myself as a total beginner, really. <laughs> no, but I do. It's like, but that's the way, isn't you know, it? If you can always think you've got stuff to learn, absolutely, you're alive, yeah. aren't you? I've and got you're so eager. much to learn. Mm. And this is, I suppose, also what I love about yoga as a whole. It's like you're studying what it is to be a human being. Mm. You know, that's the question, isn't it? It's like, who am I? And you can take that on a very metaphysical route, or you can just be very earthy about it, like. What am I as a human being? You know, what is it to, to live in this life and interact with other people? You know, yeah. as creatures on the earth. And, yeah. and actually, in that respect, you know, you can go down sort of psychological study routes. You can go down anatomical study routes. You can start to, you know, learn from, you know, plant the environment around us. And when you tap into that, like, yeah. and, and, and I would say I do naturally tap into that at times. And that just feels so juicy. Yeah. yeah I so. was seeing along those same lines. I've just finished working on a teacher training. And there was a group of maybe... Um, 15, 16 people, I think, and they they gelled so much as a group, and they were so supportive of each other that at the end you thought, well, that is the yoga. That's it, that isn't the, it? Su- not what else they've learned, how they do this, how they do that. Mm. It was they were living it during I, the course. But this of the is exactly it. It's like yeah. when you say they were living it, it makes yeah. me think of that thing cause like like. There's such a thing as like human flourishing, isn't there? Yeah. And you know when you're in that flourishing summer period. I mean, when you ask me like, also oh, where are you at? Like, what season <laughs> what are you in at the moment? It's like, it's like the question is, is like, are you really flourishing? And yeah. you know, I don't know if I can objectively answer that about myself. You almost that's <laughs> kind of what you need a teacher for, or perhaps yeah. you know, psychotherapist. But it's that sense of like, actually, I'm interested in human flourishing, both my own yeah. and my kids and the people around me, and my community. And actually, if we can get that sense happening, and and and, and it's my kind of belief and I've seen it that it happens you know and sometimes you're supporting a MISOL group over the years and you know there's flourishing but obviously over the years within community there's also deaths there's breakups yeah. there's all these you know there's, there's the things that happens in a real human being's life so so you have to go through all of that don't you and and it's it's a really I feel really privileged to be in that position where you start holding the space for people mm. not only you know in the postural yoga and so on but also there's that kind of element of pastoral care you become you know you become like a friend in, in a lot of people's lives you know? as you say if it was again with the teaching even very mechanistic you're just calling the count you're sending them through yeah it's you're not drawing much out of that are you you're no. not giving much and no, no. you're not actually taking much back out of it no. either. yeah and yeah. in the early you were saying at the beginning that in the early <laughs> days you you realized that you were somewhat lacking <laughs> Teaching-wise, yeah. teaching skill-wise, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what what sort of things did you identify, and what do you think your growth is still to come? Oh God, yeah, uh, it's like a job interview. This it isn't is it? a bit, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah it is. Um, um, I think I think there are patterns I've seen in my own sort of growth as a teacher, and there are patterns that overall I've seen in other people's growth. Yeah, and I've definitely mellowed. Um, so. So, yeah, I've definitely mellowed so that I'm more open to to trying new stuff with people. Right. So when people are stuck, um, sometimes there's perhaps a physical breakthrough to be made. Um, and obviously there's some technical expertise to go, oh, well, perhaps there's stiffness in a particular joint, so we're going to yeah. bypass that and start to open the hips or, you know, perhaps adapt the posture and stuff. Yeah. I don't know all of that. There's vast amounts to learn. So there's a lot of that technical stuff to still learn. Yeah. And as soon as I start studying and practicing, like I do as often as I can with Alaric and so on, it's yeah. like I realize how little I know when it comes to all these different kinetic chains and yeah. so on. So there's a lot of that to learn. But I suppose the main thing is, is the, main, the main thing is, is perhaps, perhaps just staying open and enthusiastic. I mean, we were just talking before this interview mm. and we were talking about how realizing the little traps we can fall into where we where we lose stamina yeah. be that mental stamina to pay attention yeah. so i i find when i'm paying attention it seems to work um and when i'm when i'm sort of lovingly caringly holding the space for somebody for them to feel more confident to explore and i'll come up with ideas for them to explore for how we can adapt practice yeah. it works and then the minute my stamina has gone be that mental stamina or whatever else, and, and I and I'm not paying so much attention, then it's then it's uh, yeah, it's futile really. And that's one of the the aspects a, a yoga teacher, full time yoga teacher, has to juggle yeah. with, isn't yeah. it? Is so so for how me much perhaps work, how much for me so for me perhaps like like the, the the next level of that is actually just working out a balance 
you know, True. purely on an almost like economic level of, yeah. so what's the right balance to get? Because yeah. there are times when, like I remember years ago when I, when I was Hamish's assistant, back then I used to work for Tri Yoga, and uh, Jonathan Satin, the director there, he was like, Joey, do these extra classes, do this beginner's course. And I was always like, no. <laughs> you know, and I meant it. I, I lived in a housing co-op, you know, right. really cheap rent. I cycled my bike across London. I would practice. I would teach a little bit. I'd go home. I didn't work much. I was offered more work, didn't want it. So your stock answer was no. My stock answer yeah. was no, I'm not that interested. Yeah. And then I remember, uh, oh, I'm about to become a father. Yeah. This patriarchal instinct in me comes <laughs> like, I must buy a house and I must provide. You know, yeah. this, this really like, in, you know, yeah. I almost could have built a fire or something. <laughs> you know, but it was that sense of like, oh. And then suddenly I took loads of work on. Yeah. And sometimes I took too much, sometimes I burnt out. Perhaps some of this stuff I was saying about, oh, I was tired because I had kids, yeah. perhaps it was because I was working too, too much. much. You know, and that's why I think it's hard to assess. Yeah. But now I'm at a point where um, my intention is to build a small home studio, yeah. you know, teach smaller groups in the home, cut costs by having a, you know, yeah. and, and by having things in a home studio, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, I don't know yet, but I'm hoping that might shift the economics a little bit. Again, Alaric and John Scott, who I used to visit sometimes down in Cornwall. Yeah. You know, when they used to teach in their living room. Small groups, isn't it? For Eight, me, 10, there was something, yeah, yeah, but there was something so um, homely about it. Mm. I remember John and Lucy, you know, they tucked me in in the blanket. Their kids would be asleep in the corner, <laughs> and I felt like one of their, you know, children. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, know you feel like More your mum and dad tucking you. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that nurturing aspect. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I love it, you know. And from a student's point of view, as you say, it's like you can absorb so much more from that intimacy and more one-on-one -on -one experience small group experience when the conditions are ripe mm. you don't do much i mean this is <laughs> this is what's so funny is probably both as, as you know uh, the mass well maybe not as a mass i don't know i'm just I've projecting got to do it. Some stuff yeah, yeah you, got, can't just sit you can't just the sit there yeah. yeah but no, but there is this sense that you know you're enabling people to do the work yeah and they they do it the process works. Mm. Do you see what I mean? It's, mm. it's almost the same when I'm doing my own practice. It's like there are times when I've experienced really rather profound kind of healing and transformation on all sorts of sort of physical, emotional, psychological levels. It's just like, oh, I'm coming together. And that's why I was saying, you know, that sort of flourishing element comes. Yeah. But when that comes, it's mostly because I step out the way. Mm. You let it happen. Let it happen, yeah. And I think it's the same when I'm teaching. It's like you see it happening for people. It's, it's working. And actually, at, at that point, perhaps maybe maybe to go back to your earlier question, perhaps having faith in that and knowing when to stand back and do a lot less, you know, and, and definitely, you know, although I was saying, you know, sometimes I, I question certain things about, oh, do I want to do these things with Chirac? Yeah. If there's one thing I hugely admire about Chirac, he has this, he has this total faith in the method yeah. and he really stands back and he lets you do it and he holds the space and he knows that just by watching, you'll do it or you'll, yeah. you'll try and, and he can really stand back. And I remember, back in 2012 assisting you know in the Charla and Chirac yeah. was sometimes saying you know a bit of technical information no do it this way or not that way a lot of what he was saying was you know do less right hold back let them do it right and let them fail yeah you know let them try and they can't do it yeah let them try again yeah you learn a lot by and now step in and maybe help them on their third try mm -hmm. and and for me that was very revealing it was like mm. oh look how um I need to be in the role of the teacher. I need to be the one who's helping and I need to be mm. seen to be helping, mm. yep. you know, yep. which is a fairly common and understandable pattern. But it's like, actually, there's a, as, as certainly as you mature a little bit, and I hope to continue maturing, it's like you, you're confident in letting people do that. You know what I mean? It's almost yeah. like you, I mean, you know, being a parent, it's like you have to let your kid fall over a bit. Yeah. You know, of course you want to catch them. You know, and of course that's there in the drop back every day. You know, I want to catch my student. I don't want them to drop on their head, no. you know. But, but to empower them, you have to actually let them go. Yeah, you can, for sure, can't you? You can, you can do too much. Take too much power away from them or... or well, they can, they can easily power. become a relationship where mm. there's actually just a bit of codependency going on mm. and it's a bit like, yes. oh, you know, hang on a minute, you yeah. know. Yeah. Is it they need me or is it I need them? You know, so what's going on here? You know, that's, that's something I hope to get better at reading. Yeah. You know, because that's complex. That's really complex. I, I believe it's complex. I think something as well, adjusting is something that I've noticed a big difference between different teachers. And mm. some people, I think, are very gifted at it. It's not something, I mean, you can teach. But you can learn the technicalities, the technicalities of it. But there's a big sense of touch and connection and feel and mm. uh, how has your journey evolved with that side of things was that something that came naturally to you to start with um it feels a bit arrogant to say yes but <laughs> go <laughs> ahead no, well 
I always liked it. Right. Like I remember when we used to do physical theatre back when I was, you know, 15, 16. Yeah. We'd do exercises of falling into each other's arms. Yes. We'd do exercises all based on trust. Yeah. Um, we'd do all these different things back when I was doing my degree of kind of acrobalance type stuff. And also when I was little at those conventions, you know, they were very quick to throw me to the top of the pyramid. And so, right. so I was used to being handled by people and I was used to handling other people. Yes. And I was always quite comfortable with it. And certainly one of the things I've noticed, you know, because sometimes I'll show people how to adjust yeah. and so on. It's like actually just to get into somebody's personal space, mm. there's an energetic shift. Mm. I mean, we're, we're, we're at classic European distance right now. Yes, you know? now. And in Nine India, when you're cute. But, 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 but yeah. as soon as you step into somebody's space, mm. there's a level of discomfort that you have to get used to mm. and relax in. Mm. And, and um, I think I learned an awful lot of it from, from theatre, from, from, from juggling, from, from these kind of games where you would play together and touch and lean on each other. Um, so, so as soon as I was assisting Hamish, which is where I was kind of first in a formal Meister environment and actually adjusting, he showed me a lot of the nuts and bolts of, you know, lift here, get the spine moving up, then turn, wait for their out breath and deepen the pressure and so on. You know, yeah. he, he taught me those things, but I mostly just learned by doing it, by doing through it. the repetition of doing it. And I always felt quite relaxed with it. And, and because I'm so attuned, well, not that attuned, but it's, it's really obvious. <laughs> but because you get attuned to whether or not somebody's comfortable, yes. you know, there's a very obvious sign. So if somebody's yeah. not comfortable, or if somebody doesn't seem to trust me, then I don't really do much. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I never take people further until I feel there's a, a willingness. I suppose that's what I was identifying when I was saying, with Mula Bandhasana, I don't have the willingness. The willingness to do it. So it's not going to yeah. happen yet. Yeah. Whereas, whereas when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm trying to facilitate people's practice with the adjustment, it's like, I'm really waiting for that. And sometimes in workshops, I'll, I'll stop and I'll make us do, you know, go back to old theatre games and stuff in order to actually get that sense of trust back. Yeah, and let people let go again. Yeah, Often absolutely. there's a lot of guarding. Yeah, a lot of Because it's not only physical stuff, it's the emotional stuff related to the physical yeah. stuff, isn't it? But a large part of what I feel happens is Sharat takes me into a place yeah. where I'm scared, yeah. my fear is there, and, um, and I'm uncomfortable. But he's totally comfortable. Right. And I feel that that's a lot of what my role is. I'm going to take somebody to a place where they might have fear and some physical discomfort that might well be there, but I have to stay relaxed. Mm. So as I'm squeezing people into marriage house and a D or whatever that happens to be there, you know, first kind of place of, um, you know, my breathing's calm, which will influence their breathing. Yeah. I can give them the verbal cue of now let's take an extra breath or you know, relax and so on. Yeah. It's like, actually, if I stay relaxed with it, I know that that will influence them. You know, in the same way, I saw it so many times in all sorts of simple situations. Like I remember taking the dog to the vet and it was hilarious because the vet freaked out because the dog was really like, <laughs> you know I mean? the vet was trying to shove a thermometer up his bottom, but you know, the <laughs> dog was having it. none of it, trying to bite, you know, and, and the vet, this, this particular incident, you know, yeah. couldn't, couldn't get the muzzle on the dog. And I remember, I remember, he, I remember yeah. he went, here, you get it on. I was like, I, was like, I, I don't even know how, you know, even though it's my dog, like, I don't think I can do this. Do you know what I mean? He's really pissed off right now. And then he, d he goes and gets the, the, the nurse, you know? Yeah. And she, um, she was brilliant. She calms the dog down. Yeah. You know, she just calms it down and then slips the muzzle on. And then, you know. Yeah, away you go. Then away they go. But it's like a, a lot of the job is to, my view is, you know, to remain calm even when other people aren't. Yeah. Um, a facilitator. Yeah, that's it, yeah. you know, so, yeah. So maybe, maybe that's what I'll be trying to progress at. Yeah, staying yeah. calm when the shit yeah, hits the fan. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. do you think the way that you've adjusted has evolved over the years? I mean, can you characterise the way you adjust now, maybe, as against then? Absolutely. Have you been much I mean, softer, or, you, uh, or yeah. any particular ways? It's hard to generalise, but one of the big differences for me was um, as I started to do more with Alaric yeah. and the Iyengar system, yeah. I, I, it changed the way I read the body. So I used to be, maybe mechanistics a bit strong or a bit rude, but it's like I used to be quite like, okay, this adjustment like this for virtually everybody. Yeah. Now I segment the body and look at what I can see. You read it a bit. I read it differently. Mm. I mean, I remember Alaric would say, can you see which way the skin is moving? And I'd look here and I'd go, no. And he'd be, well, can't you see this is dropping? Can't you see this is going? And if you want this part of the skin to move that way, well, we're going to have to spin the arm out. We're gonna take this. And we can start to actually spread skin. So you start to 
see maybe the clothing's falling a particular yeah. way. You know, you'll always see my clothing hiked up on that left side of the pelvis, and right. then you see it crunched up slightly. So you start to read, how's the clothing falling on mm. that person, which is no accident, mm. and then how's the skin moving, and then which muscles seem to be gripped and contracted, mm. which are spreading, yeah. and then you start to be able to, to some extent, read the skeleton and see, you know, is, is the lumbar extending or is it inflate? And then if we're doing twists, it's like, well, can we get the lumbar to extend before we start to turn? Yeah. And now I'm quite, not overly quick, but I'll quite often go, okay, we need to get you sitting up higher. Yeah. We need to bring your back hand to the wall to yeah. do a, a functional twist. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you know, I mean, there's different schools of thought, but for some people, yeah, I, I prefer to go down that kind of route of just changing it, bringing in a brick for Paravita Trikonasana yeah. so they can really extend yeah. before they lengthen. I, I love doing all that stuff. And we'll see in some of the lessons probably later on. Yes. Like, just keep the back heel lifted, you know, <laughs> or do, let's, just, let's just change it up a bit, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. like, we're not going to explode. It's, it's, it's allowed, you know, or we can, we can perhaps, I mean, you, you can either think of it as keeping it playful or you can just think of it like a, a mode of inquiry. I think yeah. it is a kindness as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, no, but it is. It's like, yeah. was it Hippocrates? He's like, first yeah. oath, I won't cause harm. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, there's, I suppose that's probably the journey people go on as they soften, but it's like, actually, people do hurt themselves doing yoga. Mm. If we can facilitate the process whereby it's going to be kind mm. and it's going to be, you know, maybe not easy is the right word, but certainly not going to cause injury along the way. If we can, if we can predict that, you know, yeah. and, and help iron that out, you yeah. know. I mean, that's what we do in road safety and God knows what else. When I was a kid, you didn't wear a seatbelt, you know, and now you do. No, and, you do. and now they've developed a car so that, you know, if I don't put it on, it goes ding, ding, so ding. So annoying. So you have to do it. Yeah, yeah, but it works. You know, yeah. I used to, on a short journey, not put it on, or I'd, I'd, I'd find myself taking the seatbelt off before, you know, just as you drive in. And now it's like you can't do that because you have the... It's like, I think this is what happens to you. Your, 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 your inner alarm system rings quickly and you, you just shift students in you, such a way. You change a bit. I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> and if we go back to, to why maybe you initially thought that you'd look into Iyengar. So you were oh, doing okay. Ashtanga. Yeah. And then what attracted you to, to spread your wings a little bit? Um, I, I always tried other stuff. Right. And I've always had other practices and other disciplines which fed into what I was doing with Ashtanga. So I was doing Ashtanga. So it was quite natural to it was natural. Down that so I was doing five rhythms dance on Saturday right. nights and I was doing Ashtanga and I was doing um, Aikido for lots of years, even at the same time as doing Ashtanga. Yeah. And then I was, I mean, you name it, I was doing all sorts. Um, and I would try other styles of yoga. I'd just randomly do Shivananda yoga class or other meditation styles and all sorts of different things. Um, and, and often I'd, you know, like them or not. I remember doing quite a bit of um, the shadow yoga stuff, you know, mm. the stuff that Shandor did. That's that was fascinating. Base, I really liked base. a lot of the spiral type mm. work that was happening in martial arts and dance as well. I loved Five Rhythms because there was no form. It's like move, dance, feel, you know, interact with people. Sure. That was what I liked a lot about um, the martial arts and dance. There was constant interaction with people. A bit like there is in teaching, but not in your own practice, which can get a bit lonely and solitary. Yeah. Um, and because I was working at Tri Yoga, which is a, you know, it's a, for Americans watching, it's a bit like Yoga Works, you know, it's a studio with different styles and so yeah. on. Um, one of the, the pros was, as a teacher there, you're allowed to go to class cheap. You paid one pound to go to anybody else's class. Yeah, no. And there was probably a hundred classes a week. So I'd just try things, you know, see what different people were doing. Um, yeah, and uh, people raved about this guy, Alaric, who had just started back there. So I went along, just, not really thinking much and he was really charismatic he was really charismatic and i liked the fact that he was telling me you don't know your ass from your elbow because a lot of people were going oh you're very flexible and strong oh you do third series or whatever and then they would perhaps not actually give me a lot of input yeah or before that i think for years i'd been going well you deepen the pose and go deeper and i'd even i remember giving instructions years ago saying to a student you know do this more and she said why mm. and i said because it's harder <laughs> And I think back then, that's what I thought yoga was. You yeah. go deeper, you go, you know, you increase stamina. Or something. And then suddenly it was like, well, hang on, there's a whole refinement here where you actually learn to not move. Yeah, and then you know, there's a stopping to, point Yeah, as exactly. Well. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, exactly. So, so with Allery, I, it was very quick. To, it was very quick that I realised I just didn't actually know much. I really didn't know much, you know, about all sorts of stuff. And I loved as well, he, he's an Iyengar teacher, but he's also a psychotherapist. He was very right. quick to go, stop. And I'd think, why has he told that person to stop? You go, you're experiencing agitation. And he was reading it by things like the flicker of the eye, yeah. the tensing of the jaw, the obvious 
telltale signs, like you know a dog is stressed by the other dog, yeah. or like a person is stressed by a new situation or a new place. So I was thinking, well, he can read this so well. Mm -hmm. And I still love the way he can read situations. It's just like, oh. So um, I loved that, and, I, and he could read me. I mean, you know, and, and not in a weird way, but it's like he just could tell what's going on. Yeah. He can tell when there's strain, and it's not difficult to tell. Um, but, but that just drew me in instantly. So, and again, he taught in a small home studio. So it would be me and a bunch of Iyengar teachers on an evening. And I'd have done my you know, morning practice. I'd go to him in the evening. And, you know, it, it was like learning a whole new vocabulary mm. and grammar that I was clueless about. I mean, as an English speaker, you just speak English, don't you? Then when you start learning a foreign language, you have to know what the conditional tense is, or yes, the subjunctive or you know, preposition. As I speak, I don't think about any of those things, no. but when I'm trying to learn French, I have to know these things. And in a way, what was lovely about learning and practicing, you know, not that I'm adept at all, but it's like having done some of the Iyengar study, it's mm. like, oh, I'm actually learning the nuts and bolts of the construction of, yeah. of, of what I've been using all this time. But whereas the initial process was very intuitive, and maybe I got a shove here and there and told a couple of pointers and saw the odd demo, with the Iyengar stuff, it's really stripped back and the details in there and I, I do love that mm. yeah that's definitely informed my whole kind of view approach, and approach. Yeah, yeah and is there any particular postures that came up that you thought well ooh, okay what we're doing in the Ashtanga method with this particular posture is just so away from <laughs> that alignment that it's questionable or not are um, they sort of I would say that somewhere? just varies from person to person right. because what's so interesting to me is you get some people who with sound alignment they yeah. can do X, Y, Z postures. Yeah. And then somebody else with sound alignment can't do those, but A, B, C, they can do. So yeah. it's very easy to think, I don't know. I mean, a, a classic one is in Iyengar, it's like right from the beginning, my understanding is they're always trying to keep the, the top of the buttocks down, the tailbone yeah. drawing down, the trapezius going down. And we're constantly sacrificing the trapezius without realizing it as we do something like this. Yes. You know, and, and that's just drilled into you from the beginning. And that's really hard to correct later on. Mm. Um, now there's countless poses, whereas I do the pose, if I'm going to actually grab or bind or whatever, yes. I know this is happening. Yes. But at least I know it now, yeah. before I wasn't even aware, you know, yeah. and I'm working towards other things. So it's, it's hard to tell. If you, if you get, I think if you get too perfectionist about all that, you wouldn't do most of, or, or half of the series, this so to speak. Thing. So it's that balance, isn't it, between fun, freedom yeah. and... Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing, safety. like I said, if, if I only do, you know, because there are certain sequences I've practiced that are just, you know, Iyengar sequences. If I do that for, you know, a week, well, I'm not sure if I ever have. If I do it for a couple of days, which I've done for various injuries yeah. to rest certain things, I start to get a bit like, you know, chomping on the bit. Let me jump around a bit. You know, it's like, like let me, let me, let me move, you know. So, so you're still 17, really. Yeah, kind of. Really? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Grown up I haven't well. actually matured at, at all. all. Yeah, yeah, whatsoever. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah. Just because I exhaust myself and occasionally do the end of my practice while lying on my back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, haven't, yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually learned that much. Anything at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> and so where, where's the journey taking you now? So you're at this stage, you've been te teaching for quite a chunk of time. I've been teaching and for a chunk of time. What do you hope it will evolve into? So we got, you're going to hopefully start working with the smaller groups. I'll and don't start, I'm, I'm hoping to start a, a small home studio. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to become a better teacher. And by that, I mean to support the students. Yeah. Um, and uh, hoping to manage my time more wisely. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I've got, I, I, I often have so many ideas about ways I want to branch off. Um, I, I haven't made any, and I'm not right now in any position to go, oh, that's the route, the route I'm you taking. Want to go. Yeah. You're just exploring. I'm just exploring and, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just exploring. And I mean, I, and I'm still doing as much as I can to see some of the senior anger teachers and to dance five rhythms and to you know, stay sane <laughs> and, uh, you know, raise my kids as best I can in such a way, you know, and, and facilitate that process, you know. And, and the yoga, I think, helps me do that and supports me doing that. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I was, I was just in Mysore and an old friend Tarek, you know, and he said, oh, do you ever want to do anything else, you know, and that made me, that made me think. You uh, know. And do you? Yeah, definitely. I, I miss some of the performance stuff. Sometimes I want to do other things that feel more playful. Yeah. Um, 
I vary with thinking about teaching, like, well, no, maybe I don't. I, in teaching, I don't think it's that creative. You know, you hold the space for people, yeah. you facilitate the space for people, but actually, there's, there's a system that sort of works, and it's not a particularly creative process. Sometimes you, 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 you make some changes to, to, to facilitate... certain but individuals, it's, but it's not, yeah. it's, But it's not created the way writing a novel's creative no. or playing guitar's creative. So, I mean, if anything, I think I'd like to um, do more of those things, play more music, um, dance more, you know, be more... I, I've been teaching during this week quite a bit about... Um, the meditative state we've been doing sitting meditation yeah. and actions of pratyahara and uh, richard freeman talks a little about it and a lot of artists and talk about that that moment of wonder when the mouth kind of goes mm, mm, mm. and i know in myself it's like i listen to beautiful music or just this week i've been reading a novel that several times made me kind of go oh, the the joy of being alive the wonder that 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 juicy yeah. i, I want to be able to i suppose have a lot of that in my life you know and and balance work and yoga practice in such a way that I'm still making loads of space for those those creative artistic things to, to be there flourishing. You know? Yeah. So guitar is a good hobby. It makes me forget all about yoga, <laughs> but I'd like to have more time for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I sometimes think about um, some of the stuff that I used to do with drama and all that, and you know, think. But then now you've got me on a roll and I could be going I down know, a rabbit hole. Like, like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I want to write a novel. You know. yeah, exactly. I have a novel in me. Oh. <laughs> so we should be expecting all sorts yeah, of crazy exactly, stuff in yeah, the coming just years. Just you wait. Yeah, yeah just yeah. you wait. Cool. It's been such a pleasure talking to you, Joey, and yeah. I'm sure everybody's going to love this and uh, hope to speak to you again. And we're going to be doing some more stuff. We're going to be doing some little demos, some of our S on the school stuff. So look out for the other stuff with uh, Joey as well. Thanks. Thanks. Cool. That was great.